Well, good morning, Rosedale. We're here with Rise with Rosedale this Monday morning. This fabulous Monday morning, getting uh, getting our week off to a good start. There you go. We talked uh, Thursday, Friday. No, Friday was right. our Mother's Day. So yep, Thursday, Thursday, we talked about finishing our question. So we're going to look at that again today. Uh, the question was, dear RBC, do you think coronavirus is a judgment of God? And what do you expect next? Thank you. Uh, Tom, we'll start back off with you. Your opinion kind of changed there a little bit. and You said that you did not think it was a God's judgment. Right. Yeah, I still don't think it's God's judgment. And the reasoning, like I said, the reasoning behind it's kind of, I guess, awkward. Um, it's different, but <clears throat> I don't know. I just got to thank him. And the, the, the scale of damage that's been done through the coronavirus is not anything... I guess close to what you think of whenever you think of like Old Testament judgment, right. God, mm -hmm. you know, um, the death toll just on a world scale isn't even close. And I guess maybe you could say by punishing and maybe a single nation could be judgment, if, but no nation's really got a extreme death toll over another. I mean, I think the, the USA, what, we, no, we are leader. leading, ain't we? <laughs> we're the leader. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, and, and even us, we're, well, you that's take, not... Yeah, and you uh, take China, Italy, you know, those were the first ones. Italy was running high there for a while. We took the lead in death toll. But that is, it, it's a very interesting thought. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll be um, first say it's a different point of view. Um, so you think on a on a global scale, well, on a United States scale, you don't think this is a big deal? No, because it doesn't even come close to the plague. Uh, why, you know then why is everything shut down? I have no idea. <laughs> I have I've yet to figure that one out. I guess because they don't have a vaccine. Only thing I can figure, you know, I think of the Spanish flu. What was it, nineteen eighteen? Mm -hmm. um, global pandemic. Yeah, rightfully so. Killed a ton of people. Ton of people. Um, didn't have near the technology of medicine that we do today. Mm -hmm. But yet, nothing shut down. They would quarantine when you got sick. Right. You know, I was listening to, the, there was a guy on TV the other day, he actually survived, I forget what it was, he'd like survived the Spanish flu, <laughs> he had he had corona, he survived it, he's like, come out, he's like 101 years old or something, and something else had happened to him. Of course, he lived through the Depression. Yeah, I've seen something like that too, I something about World War Two. He that? fought in World War Two. I mm -hmm. believe is how it was, I believe he survived yeah. the the Spanish flu, that's what it was. It was World War Two. So he'd done all these, you know, and, and he'd had the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, I did. I seen that. <laughs> and he survived. Yeah, he's had the worst luck of anyone ever. <laughs> well, he, he, he's do made you it say, through. Do you, yeah. <laughs> Felt like a three-legged dog you got lucky, you know. Uh, but, you know, and and you look back at history and you look at the that flu, uh you go back and look at the plague in Europe. I yeah. mean, if you got caught that, you just as well went out and dug your grave. Yeah, I mean, you're done. Yeah, because there was no, no coming back from that. Yeah, that I mean, killed like, I mean, we didn't have near the population we do today, not even close, and it wiped out half of Europe's population. And the the survival rate of Corona is like ninety nine percent. Yeah, very high. I mean, it's super high. Yeah. So we look at this and we see everything shut down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for no, I don't think it. I think it's for no, no good reason. I think we need to take precautions. Absolutely, yeah. Precaution. But we took more precautions for this than we do the flu. Hey, you know what? I looked at a 
I'm not a big conspiracy man. But I looked at one. Other I'm getting day. to. I'm really getting to be one. <laughs> I looked. At, I'm not a big one. But I looked at one other day, and it was talking about how the government's controlling population, and um, our government's trying to control population, and it was talking about this coronavirus making it a big deal, wanting to sanitize everything, uh, wear the face mask, wear gloves out in public, mm -hmm. and all this other stuff to keep yourself germ-free, when in all reality is the worst possible thing that you can do to your body mm -hmm. because it destroys your immune system. If you did, you Was you able to watch the pandemic on YouTube? They took it down now. Uh -huh. There's so many of these videos. Well, this woman, and I can't remember her name, but she was a doctor with Fauci. Like they come up together, you know, was in the medical programs together and all this. Well, she starts unraveling all this stuff. They end up, like, imprisoning her, more or less to keep her quiet. But they put her in prison, destroyed all of her records and all this. But she was talking the same thing you're talking. She goes, the worst thing that we can do is put a mask on her face. She said, because, she said, you expel, she said, when you expel some, she said, say the coronavirus she said when you expel when you call for whatever she said it leaves your body she said any bacteria is leaving your body when you when you expel she said when you talk when you breathe you're expelling bacteria out into the atmosphere she said that's where we pick it up at we pick she said what the mask is doing is it's recycling that she goes, you can't, she goes, you know, you pick up a spore of this. And she said, it takes so many spores before the, she said, one spore's not going to do it. She said, that coronavirus spore, whatever, lodges, and she said, it begins to grow. She said, it takes other molecules coming together to bind all this stuff together. She said, what you're doing, she said, you're reintroducing all those spores right back in your system. She goes, your system's not going out here picking up other spores that your body can make an antibody to to keep you safe, which is what you're talking yep. about. And so it made sense. She said, you're recycling the same old spores over and over and over. She said, it's just making them grow, grow, grow. She said, our immune system is going to be squat come this fall. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. That's what that Dr. Rossin said. He said, you think, you think things are bad now? He said, wait till this fall. Mm -hmm. He said, your immune system's had time to weaken if you're doing that stuff. He yeah. said your immune system has had plenty of time to basically kill itself. You have no, or your antibodies, a lot of them's gone. Yeah. And he said, so you think coronavirus is killing people? He said, wait till people start picking up just normal stuff. Yeah. He said it'll kill them because well, they don't have anything to fight it off with. You'll think about the flu season. Yeah, that's what I mean, he said. Flu season's going to be terrible. Yeah. And I don't know what we won't see this shut down again. I'm, I wouldn't. Out of the few days. Because, I mean, you know, I mean, I know some Tennessee schools in our area, like Sullivan County and maybe Bristol City, had shut down some schools back in, like, January or something yep. to clean them. You know, they mm -hmm. shut down like a, had a long weekend. They shut down some around here. Didn't they in Buchanan County, I think? Buchanan County shut down. I think maybe. Okay. I, I, but anyway, and, and I, I think it was like talk around here because there was, like, one day, I believe I heard Ashley say something like there was 100 kids out of, Honecker Elementary out with a flu or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but we're, we're you had to have you have to ha reach a certain number of students out right. for that. And I mean, if we have a hundred kids out, that's I mean that's not a lot because right. we're K through seven school. Mm -hmm. You know, we have more than anyone else in the county. Right. Yeah, I can, I don't like it's like the biggest school in the county. Yeah, mm -hmm. I Honecker believe elementary. elementary school. So, as you, you know, you think about that. <sighs> kind of scary, ain't it? It is scary. Yep, it is scary. Now, for your older people and stuff like that, yeah, wear the mask. Yeah. Definitely need to take precautions. Not saying that you don't need to. Yeah, don't just go in licking doorknobs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> You know, wash your hand, you know, but these are things that we should already been doing. Yeah. I mean, it was stuff our moms, we had moms on here Friday. It was stuff our moms taught us growing up, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, do this, go wash your hands before you eat. Go wash your hands before you do, you know. And I was reading a thing the other day, it said that um, you touch your face like 2,000 times a day. 
Never really thought about it like that. The average person. <laughs> you know, every time you rub your eyes or, I mean, you never, mm -hmm. you just don't think about it. No. But. Well, what do you think? I, you know, I definitely see where you're coming from. Absolutely see where you're coming from. And for the clarification, I'm not saying that God isn't involved. Oh, I think he is. Yeah, I think he's But yeah. I don't think it's a judgment. Right. But I think that God is, like I said, manipulated. Allowing, yeah, allowing it to. Yeah. Definitely allowing it to take place. Um, You know, I keep coming back for weeks. I keep coming back to Matthew 24. And Jesus here himself gives us six signs of the coming of the end of time. And he says that you'll hear wars and rumors of wars. Uh, it says, see that be not troubled for all these, most of these, uh, these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nations going to rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. Uh, you know, you look at some of the famines, the pestilence, you know, of course, pestilence is disease or viruses or, uh, whatever, and you look at some of these things, um, I, I, and of course I've listened to, gosh, I don't know how many and read like crazy, you know, when all this first started, but, you know, a lot of pastors, and a lot of teachers are coming out with the end time, all that. David Jeremiah, I watched a video of his the other day, and it was interesting, don't necessarily agree with it, but it was very interesting. But he did say something I did agree with in his message. But he was talking about, he was talking about this wasn't a sign of the times. That this wasn't a sign. Uh, he said that this wasn't a sign of the coming of Christ or the sign of the end of time. I, I kind of disagree with that because in a lot of ways, I look at that and I see that Jesus is saying that pestilence, famines, earthquakes, and in diverse places, various places. You know, all these natural disasters, all this stuff is, I think, that as we see all this stuff being ramped up and the effects of it being ramped up, Tom, you know, I, I think that it is a sign of the times. Uh, is it God's judgment? You've almost pulled me over to your side. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't see it being the pandemic, the, you know, the global disaster that we're looking at. Now, a lot of your politicians are going to tell you it's because we've done such a good do job of social distancing and, and mm -hmm. quarantine. I don't I'm going to call bull on that. I am too. Yeah, they've not been to that. they've not been to a low store to Walmart. No. <laughs> no, no. No, they can shut down small businesses, but if you go to a big corporation, mm -hmm. you're going to be fine in there. Yeah. 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 So that yeah, I, I call bull on the I heard somebody say the other day, well, it wasn't near as bad and and I believe it was our wonderful governor said huh. uh well, it's because Virginians have done such a good job of social... No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he hasn't been to the Walmart. Yeah, been late. Nobody's been to uh, his beach house in <laughs> Myrtle Beach. <laughs> Did you hear about that? Uh -uh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he went down to his... But he's got a beach house in... Uh, is it not Oak? Outer Banks. It's Outer Banks. He's got a beach house in the Outer Banks. Now, he went down there. Oh. Like the second or third week after all this happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Social distance himself. Yeah, yeah, we're not allowed to. We're supposed to stay home. Quarantine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm not getting into that politics. I'm gonna get mad, but <laughs> but no. You know, I do think that this is a a a wake up call for the church. Uh, yeah. You know, this is the first time in history. I'm gonna say the history of America. I think I'm right. Maybe in the early days. Well, no, I can't say the history of America because in the early days they did try to squander the church and even in America um, through some of the Virginia Baptist history and stuff. So, you know, probably since America has become a nation, I'll say that, because of colonies and stuff, since the birth of America, um, would the church has never been told to shut their doors. 
Um, you know, and I, as a pastor, I really struggled with that. But I do think it was a wake-up call for the churches. And I think it's been, in a lot of ways, it's been good uh, because we see that there's people receiving the gospel on Facebook and YouTube that never have. Right. Um, and and that's going great. Um, but as the church is getting ready to reopen, which I'll be meeting with, um, you know, leadership and be getting that into place and, and be looking at doing all that. And, uh, you know, we're looking at reopening possibly as soon as next Sunday. Um, so, or I guess not next Sunday, this Sunday. Uh, but, you know, we, we've got some things that we're going to look at as, as leadership in the church and, and kind of see and go from there. What do we think is next? You know, he says, is this judgment of God? What do you, what do you expect next? You know, what do you expect, Tom? Uh, from a religious standpoint, I expect churches to flourish. Oh, I do. I yeah. think it's going to backfire because I think what what was wanting to happen, I think, and this is a conspiracy, I think that there is a, a ultimate group of people that is deciding the fate of the world. And I think that, um, you know, I've read Revelations over and over and over, and I think we've tried to label it as countries, and I can't go into depth right now because I certainly haven't finished all the study that I want to do. But we've, I think for so many years, we've tried to label these people, these pen in the revelations as nations. And I don't know that, I don't know that we're correct in that. But anyway, I think we're going to see more of the same. I think you're seeing how a one world government could be easily set up. Yeah, well, don't we kind of have that anyway? Well, uh, yeah, we've already but we're not under the, the central bank, right? which it's coming. Uh, and through all that, uh, you're going to see, I mean, we we printed two coin, two trillion dollar platinum coins the other day as the U.S. minted two trillion dollar to cover the stimulus package. I mean, you just go in there and print whatever you want to print. I mean, it's going to get to where the that has no weight. It means nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be no value to the American dollar. Um, and it's going to set us up. We're seeing the next stimulus package. It's on in the House right now to be set up as a visa card that every citizen and non-citizen too, I think, gets a visa card. Well, that's just that, I think. So what do we expect? I think you're going to expect more of the same. I think we, we might as well get ready to see some. And I don't want to be gloom and doom but I think you might as well get ready for more of the same your opinion uh, I don't particularly agree with all of that but yeah I mean as far as the one world government getting that set up we have the United Nations it's kind of basically a one world government in and of itself right now it is um because we do have rules in the entire world that every country has to follow, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then the United Nations in intervenes mm -hmm. inside of your country. So, like, if like I know one of them for sure is that a country cannot kill its own citizens. Mm -hmm. So if Donald Trump released something on us and killed us, then the United Nations would definitely intervene inside of our country. Of course, that would never happen because we're kind of the leaders of the United Nations. Right. But that's just an example. So we do have a one world government. As far as the currency, a global bank. We we already have a global. I mean, you have the central bank. Yeah. Where, which is where all nations borrow from. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely heading in that direction. But I don't know how fast we're going. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I think we're going there, but I don't know that we'll be there even in my lifetime. Right. 
In fact, I doubt that we, uh, my opinion is that we wouldn't. We'll we had this conversation the other day. <laughs> yeah. I think we're going there a lot faster than you think we're going there. I don't think we are. Oh. Uh, I don't well, think we are. I think that we've still got it set up pretty good. Yep. And I, th I think that the one thing people keep on petrified that we're moving towards socialism. And yes, our country, anything that the government controls is socialism. Mm -hmm. You know, your roads, that's a socialistic aspect of government. Mm -hmm. The government controls it. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, public education, that's socialism. Mm -hmm. You know, the government controls that. But not all education is from the government. You know, you got private schools. Sure. So they haven't necessarily the whole educate across the board made that all, you know, education is not socialism right. in our country because you do have options. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as moving to a social country, that means that the government controls all your capital and all of your resources and there is no free market, right? basically. And our country is... Well, free market capitalism is what makes our country, period. I mean, that's what it was found on with uh, Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations, you know, and all those other books long before our time that we was based our economy on. Um, the go government, our government, it's written, has a laissez-faire approach, mm -hmm. which means hands off. They don't, our government doesn't get involved in our economy that much of course whenever we see wars come around like world war ii mm -hmm. then you see the nation nationalize a lot of industries because they need it for the war effort so like i mean i know ford and general motors whoever else was a big automobile producer in world war ii completely stopped making automobiles for three or four years and made nothing but tanks. Well, even during this coronavirus, we see where... Ventilators. The, yeah, ventilators. Uh, even some of the chicken houses, you know, Trump ordered them to stay open. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, you see government nationalize things, but they, yeah, they privatize a, it as yeah. soon as it's over. Yeah, and I don't think that we'll, we're moving towards social, any sort of socialism. Right. I think... I think it depends a lot on the church, Tom, to be honest with you. I think it depends on where the church plays a role in our commitment to God, our, our prayer to God. You know, I think that I think that the, the church's role in that is huge. If we just, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, I can't wait to get things back to normal. I hope we never go back to normal as far as who we were before the coronavirus because... I don't think we were where we needed to be as a nation. Um, I think we need to, as a church, you know, we've talked about for such a time as this, I think it's time for the church to step up and be the church. And I think we had backed off a lot of that of just going through life being carefree. Yeah. Um, so I think that the timing of all this coming to fruition is essentially placed in the hands of the church. Um, by our actions. You got anything else? No, sir. We've been a little long-winded on this one. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> All right. Well, let's pray us out, and, and uh, we'll see you back here in the morning. In the morning, we're going to have a special guest with us. I believe my sister-in-law, aren't we? I believe so. So, your sister in law and, and your niece. And my niece. Yeah. They're both going to be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we just thank you for just the freedoms that we do have. And Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for our leadership, Lord, that you just raise them up. And, and Lord, we pray for the church, Lord, that we come to a place of acknowledging you and seeing you, Lord, open our blinded eyes that we may see. Lord, help us and lead us and guide us and direct us in all things. And Lord, we just ask it in your sweet and precious name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen.